You're welcome back to the program. And right now we have our Father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua, in our midst. Amen. So we've received a lot of emails, multitudes of emails from people all around the world who uh, have a question regarding meditation on your last message concerning meditation. And um, out of multitudes of those emails, we want to read the most popular question from these emails, sir. And the question goes, how do we compare meditation to reading and committing to memory? Okay. Well, they are taking me back to the last meeting. Yes. If I'm right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Wow. I'm ready to do every proper thing for salvation of their soul. Amen. Nothing is too big to do. How do we compare meditation to reading and they were committing to memory and committing to memory mm. okay well meditation compared to reading and committing to memory well meditation is inwardly received Christ himself is with us in the living world. Christ is with us in the living world because Christ and his living world are one. Not just reading the word and committing to memory, which is valuable which is good. Which many of us today do for the purpose of preaching the gospel, for the purpose of teaching the gospel and counseling. We have forgotten that you cannot build one up spiritually on the history of the world. We are only made spiritual by living in the world and by the world living in us. Meditation is not just about the theory and the history of the world but also about living in the world and the world living in us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed, sir, right now it goes to the peace as it teaches. So I can see one question that comes from a viewer called Peter from Zimbabwe, a little bit worried. He said, good morning, Pastor TV Joshua. How can the word of God work through us? Man of God, the reason I'm asking this is because I have studied the Word of God for years, but I'm still not seeing the Word of God work through me. Well, if I may take you to the book of John. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 31. True disciples. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They answer him. We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Verse 34, Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. 
So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Well, the question you are asking me is simple. It is highly profitable to store the word of God in our heart. I take it again. It is highly profitable to store the word of God in our heart. Jesus said in John 8 verse 31 to 32, If you abide in me, and my way abides in you, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Back to the question. The more the word of God we inwardly receive, the more we resist sin, the more we resist temptation. The word of God can only walk through us. When we inwardly receive it, one may study the word of God for years. If he does not at it, leave it, he is not a dwarf of the word. The book of James 1 verse 22 say, be the dwar of the word. Not the hearer only. Viewers, be the dwar of the word. Not the hearer only. Wow, thank you very much, sir. It reminds me when you said that if you take the word of God to heart and truly make it parts of you, it will, by its very nature, change you. Thank you. And you will find yourself called to act with God. And we have more questions, sir, from our viewers that actually concern this topic. Um, this gentleman is actually a bishop, sir, of a large ministry, and he writes this. Prophet T.B. Joshua, how do you say be healed and there will be healing? Man of God, I am a bishop with thousands of members and branches. It is my desire to see myself in the ministry of healing one day, for I have studied the word of God for years. Similar to the former question. Yes, sir. Many Bible students deceive themselves because they are not acting, living, or doing the word. Because the Bible says, the living way in us is equivalent to Christ being in us. So, what are we talking about? Today, we memorize scripture. When they thought of the Bible, are from the Spirit. How can you memorize something from the spirit? To memorize it is mental ascent, intellectual. Today, we memorize scripture. When the thought of the Bible are from the spirit and the language from men, that cannot work. In the first Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the help of the Holy Spirit. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the help of the Holy Spirit. That does not mean people will not say Jesus is Lord without the help of the Holy Spirit. This is what we are facing today. This is the crisis. This is the disunity in the, in the church of God. The cause of the, the crisis and the cause of disunity. This is the cause of misunderstanding, misinterpretation. 
Yes, thank you, sir. If you can allow us to take one more question. It's from your uh, parents. <laughs> <laughs> from the viewers, sir. And um, the question says that, um, my dear prophet, how do I resist sin? I mean temptation. I have studied the Bible for years and read the Bible many times, but I still don't have the courage to resist sin and temptation. Well, when we look at this first Corinthians chapter two, verse four to five, God's power works through his war and his spirit to bring a new birth to bring a real Christian, to bring a real bishop, to bring a real born again. God's power works through his way and his spirit. When you say in Jesus' name, that should be through his way and his spirit. He speak to us through his way by his spirit.